G'day folks, and welcome to episode 3 of the Find the Critter Challenge, where today we will investigate the family Zygnathidae, which includes the seahorses, pipefish and sea dragons, and a few extra crazy critters that are somewhere in between the three. These mostly little guys are fairly common but inconspicuous in most marine habitats. They have such unique shapes and often outstanding camouflage that they are impossible to find until your first one, after which they seem to be everywhere. They're a fascinating group, well worth learning to find. So after a brief introduction, I'll challenge you to the 10 levels of Find the Critter. The most common feature shared by the group is the tube snout of varying lengths, which they use like a pipette to suck up tiny crustaceans. Disruptive coloration breaks up the outline of most species, and their stop-start swimming motion and swaying with the surge in between swims makes it hard for predators and divers to spot them. Pipefish can swim pretty fast if they need to, much like an eel, but seahorses can't, so avoiding being seen is their best defence. The 80 or so species of seahorses are all in the genus Hippocampus, which means apart from colour and size variations, they are all very similar. They feature the famous horse-shaped head, a prehensile tail for grabbing on, and the kangaroo-like pouch where males carry the fertilised and developing eggs. There are more than 200 species of pipefish, so it's not surprising to see great variation between species. Males carry the fertilised eggs on their bellies until they hatch. The most representative genus is Corythoichthys, which are common on reefs. The group gets a little weirder with the double-ended pipefish, who is usually found in seagrass and has the prehensile tail of the seahorse. And my favourites from the genera Dunkerocampus and Dory Ramphus, which are usually found in crevices and overhangs or urchin spines where they clean parasites or fish. A number of species are commensal and are found almost exclusively on invertebrate hosts. So if you can find the host, you have a great chance of finding the critter. This pipefish almost always lives on the mushroom coral fungia. Likewise, many pygmy seahorses have a preferred host and they have evolved to look just like them. One of the most impressive skills any dive guide can show off is the ability to find pygmy seahorses. They're about the size of a couple of grains of rice, but if you know what to look for, you'll be spotting your own in no time. A quick backstory on corals and their relatives, the whips and the fans. Their appearance depends on whether or not their polyps are extended. When polyps are extended, the corals are feeding and they look bushy or hairy, and they make great hiding places. If they are attacked by butterfly fish or touched in any way, they quickly retract their polyps and look smoother and provide less cover. It's no surprise then that these pygmy seahorses have evolved to look like the closed polyp version of their host fans. This soft coral is half open, half closed, so you can see how their appearance can vary. This white seahorse would be much happier if all those white polyps were out feeding. Somewhere in between the pipefish and seahorses, we have the short pouch pygmy pipe horse. And topping off the weirdness, my personal favourite, the tiny lembe sea dragon. I prefer its proper name, Chionomichthys rumangani which translates to swollen threadfish and gives a shout out to the Indonesian dive guide credited with discovering it, a bloke by the name of Rumangan. So now you know what you're looking for, we'll get into the challenge. Each level will begin with 10 seconds to spot them as you might come across them on a dive, followed by closer and more obvious shots. So good luck and happy critter spotting.
if you'd like more of this sort of content, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe for more critifying and filming techniques. I'm Josh from Undersea Productions, thanks for watching.